And now we're going to have uh, Leslie. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, Ginger, thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak today. Um, I have some prepared remarks, but uh, I thought first I'd just tell you how I got here. Um, I am not a politician. I'm not an entrenched Democrat. I'm a nurse, and I'm the mother of two public school children. And um, basically, I was going about my business. And about a year and a half ago, uh, Governor Christie's education cuts hit my children's school district. And they hit my children's school district hard. Uh, we lost 40% of our state aid. And um, I, was, I knew it was going to be bad, and it was bad. And I began to speak out. And I began to speak out at board meetings. And before I knew it, there was a bunch of other parents behind me speaking out. And we had an organization of 200 members. We were a grassroots organization. And we began lobbying our local officials about what was happening in Sparta. And I met, the first thing we did was we held a rally outside their office. We had, within two weeks of the cuts, we had 100 people outside their offices demonstrating. There had never been a rally of 100 people outside their offices demonstrating. Uh, we, we began lobbying them, begging them, calling them, phone, calling, phone calls, begging them to vote against Governor Christie's budget. Um, finally, they said, okay, we'll have a meeting with you. We had several meetings with them. Um, we kept asking them, how could this be right? How can you vote for this budget? How can you cut a billion dollars from education at the same time cut a billion dollars in taxes for millionaires? How could this be happening? How can this be okay? My, my then first grader was going to go back to school that fall with no art teacher, no music teacher, no gym teacher, no world language teacher, and her friends were going to be expected, her six-year-old friends were going to be expected to walk to school on 40 mile an hour county roads because they told us there was no money and they refused to tax millionaires for the billion dollars that was needed for education. And quite frankly, I was outraged and I haven't stopped since. And I'm not going to stop because this is not acceptable. This is not acceptable in the United States of America. And this is not acceptable That's right. That's in the right. state of New Jersey. That's right. We then went to Congressman Freelinghausen. The cuts had happened. There was a jobs bill, a federal jobs bill, that was a deficit neutral bill. Okay? Deficit neutral. He refused to vote for our kids to get the teachers back. He refused because he was going to vote lock, stop, Republican, and he didn't care about the kids in our district. That's the truth. He, there was no reason for him not to vote for that bill. It did not add to the deficit, and the children in his district needed that money. Thankfully, that that did pass, and our specials teachers were brought back. But it wasn't because of the elected representatives that represent us. It was from other people around the country that voted to pass that bill, other Democrats. Anyway, so the next thing that happened was the spring came. We had been very vocal. I was asked to, to um, testify before the New Jersey Assembly Education Committee on behalf of the, of the Sparta School District and what had happened. We had been very vocal. We had been in the newspaper. And that spring, I attended a Governor Christie Town Hall meeting. And I sat in the second row and was raising my hand like crazy because I really wanted to talk to this governor. But right in front of me sat Allison McCose, who was the woman that I'm now running against. And she had met with me several times. We lobbied them. In fact, they were the one, they had set up a, a meeting for us to go to talk to the Education Commissioner of New Jersey, Brett Shudler, because they were so frustrated with how much we had bothered them and they just wanted us out of their hair. But guess what, that day, she didn't remember who I was. She asked me, where are you from? 
A week later, I attended a, uh, an event at the Florida Education Association had asked me to attend. Gary Chisano, which is another member of the assembly who I'm running against, again didn't recognize me and said to the Sparta teachers, none of this would have happened if you had just taken a wage freeze. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The Sparta teachers did take a wage freeze. They were one of the first groups of teachers in the state to take a wage freeze, but he didn't remember that. And at that point, that's when I knew I was going to run for office because I thought, these people are not representing us. And I keep waiting for somebody to represent me, and they're not there. So I guess I have to represent me. So I hope that my candidacy, if nothing else, will inspire some of you to, to decide to run for office. If you support public schools, please consider running for your local board of education. Because there are a lot of people that don't support public schools that run for board of education positions. So I just want that to be said, and I, and I hope you'll consider running for your town council. I would also like, this is some of my prepared remarks, because the next thing that happened was, I then decided, as a, as just as a protester, to go to Trenton because the collective bargaining rights of public employees was being threatened by legislation there. In Trenton, the legislation was put forth to strip collective bargaining rights from public employees. This time, I headed to Trenton as an individual protester to join the teachers, firefighters, police officers, and other public employees who were demonstrating against the actions of their state government. I am a strong union supporter, and I would like to share my own personal story with you. At the age of 15, I lost my mother to cancer. My father, my father was unable to care for my two sisters and me, and by 16, I was paying rent and living in an apartment. They were tough times for my sisters and I, and at age 19, President Reagan eliminated my Social Security survivor benefits, leaving me with very little income. These are the entitlements that everybody wants to take away from us. My mother paid into Social Security, but died at the age of 44. But that money that she put in was taken away from me. It was 1982, and as far as I'm concerned, it was beginning, the very beginning of the war that has been waged against the working people and the middle class in this country for the last 30 years. Unfortunately, at that point, when I lost those benefits, I dropped out of college. But in my early 20s, I found a good union job. That job provided me with a living wage, health, and dental benefits. I was able to get my teeth fixed after years of neglect. I was able to see a doctor for the first time in years. Eventually, I saved enough money to go back to college. I worked my way through college and earned my degree in nursing. Because of that union job, I was not saddled with huge amounts of debts upon receiving my degree. I am afraid that my story is no longer possible in the state of New Jersey or in the country of the United States, for that matter. I, I'm sorry. Public and union employees are losing their jobs at frightening rates. Workers are losing their rights to bargain pension and health benefits collectively. I feel this is New Jersey's most important moment in 200 years. If we continue to allow our governor and legislature to continue to destroy our schools and our unions, it will be the end of the middle class in New Jersey. My candidacy represents the frustrations of the people of the Occupy Wall Street movement. Collectively, we feel our elected officials are not representing us. This is at the heart of my decision to seek office. They are representing the corporatists that fund their campaigns. It is past the time for the working people of this great state and country to say no more. It is time for the regular people, the teachers, the nurses, the police officers to get involved and consider running for office. I hope those of you out there who truly support education will run for your local boards. I hope many will consider running for their town council or even seek higher office. Very early in this process, I was told we are in an uphill battle and our chances of winning were slim to none. But we have received an enormous amount of support from people around this district. The amount of small contributions we have received has given us enough to help be competitive in this race. But make no mistake, we are the David to the Republicans' Goliath. We have almost 200 volunteers on our volunteer list, and I know just by looking around and seeing our opponent's signs all over the place that we are having an impact. If every Democrat and every teacher and every police officer and public employee voted for us November 8th, we could win. 
A win for the Democratic 24th campaign would send a huge message to Trenton as well as the entire nation. <clears throat> We know, we know who has been committing class warfare for 30 years, and mm -hmm. it is the wealthy and the powerful in this country. Your Democratic 24th candidates are not shy about making these claims. We have the truth and the people on our side, and we will not be quiet any longer. We will only support candidates who support the workers and middle class and those who believe in the general wel welfare of all Americans. So let's keep this energy going, let's continue to put pressure on our elected officials, and let's put only candidates who truly represent the people in office. Thank you. Thank you.